Coming up next, County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher accused of sexual assault and harassment. Tonight, we have the lawsuit filed by the woman he admits he had an affair with. We had rain move through earlier today, already starting to see some of that snow across the mountains, and we're not done yet. Another storm system moving in keeps the rain in the forecast. We'll time it out coming up. Endless construction along Pershing Drive causing road closures and detours. People are wondering, why is this taking so long? A behind the scenes look at how foul paramedics respond to calls and keep people safe. A family buys 200 acres of land right here next to the Mexican border. We'll show you what they're going to do with it. We're doing a little deep end of fitness to get a small taste of how the Padres train during the off season. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher is being accused of sexual assault and harassment in a newly filed lawsuit and tonight he is responding to those accusations. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. The accuser is a former San Diego Metropolitan Transit System employee and these allegations come just three days after Fletcher announced he was entering rehab for PTSD and alcohol abuse. CBS 8's David Goffertson read through the entire complaint and breaks down those accusations. CBS 8 is naming the plaintiff Gracia Figueroa because her attorney named her in this lawsuit. The 34-year-old worked as a public relations specialist with the San Diego Metropolitan Transit System at the same time County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher served as chair of the MTS board. The lawsuit alleges Fletcher started flirting with Figueroa on Instagram, sending her a private message in February 2022 saying he was home alone, no wife and kids, and commenting, I have a closet, no one would see us there, smiley face. In May 2022, Figueroa met Fletcher at a hotel for a drink, according to the lawsuit, and he took her to the 16th floor in a stairwell where he, quote, put his hands on her and kissed her. Figueroa insisted they stop and went home, the lawsuit said. In June of last year, after an MTS committee meeting, Fletcher allegedly met Figueroa in a conference room and, quote, put his mouth against hers and began to grab her breasts through her clothes. Miss Figueroa pushed him back, according to the lawsuit. And then in December 2022, Figueroa alleges Fletcher sexually assaulted her a second time, quote, grabbing her breasts underneath her blouse and pulling off some of her clothes. In a statement, Fletcher said the events were, quote, consensual interactions, and Figueroa tried to extort him by demanding millions of dollars before filing a lawsuit. I have not done the things they are alleging, but I did violate the basic trust and loyalty of my marriage. Lorena and I have already started to work through this. The blame for allowing myself to be in this situation rests entirely on my shoulders. Now, Figueroa was fired from MTS last month, and in her lawsuit, she also alleges unfair retaliation in the workplace. Uh, David, at this point, Nathan Fletcher has not resigned from the Board of Sup Supervisors. Do we know where he is tonight? His office says he is out of state, undergoing rehab for alcohol abuse and post-traumatic stress from his combat time in the military. Lots to sift through in that lawsuit. David Gropperson reporting for us. Thanks, David. The calendar says it's spring, but it sure feels like another blast of winter with more rain and cooler temperatures today. Yeah, the question tonight is if we're out of the woods and if it's going to rain on tomorrow's Padres home opener. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis here early with the first look at your microclimate forecast. Well, if you're looking towards the coast right now and you're seeing that sunshine, do not be fooled by it. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked outside. And I saw the sun. I was Hello, like, here nice. I am for a moment. Yes, exactly. And that's because we've been talking about this, the one-two punch. Yeah. So we had the rain that came through earlier. Now we are starting to see a little bit of a dry spot. But here's the thing. We got an area of low pressure that's going to bring in the snow and more rain overnight through tomorrow. So over the last six hours, we have seen some rain falling across the county and that was with a weakening atmospheric river. We had more than a quarter of an inch, especially across most areas of North County. Now, when you take a look at the current satellite radar, that's why you're seeing some sunshine closer towards the coast. So not seeing too much go on. A lot of that across the mountains and manifesting into some snow because the snow level is coming down. Also seeing some showers near Pine Valley, but we're not out of the woods just yet. Setting the clock in motion, we are looking at rain moving in the forecast and even some thunderstorms overnight. That will continue to linger all the way through tomorrow morning. 
happening a lot more when it does come to snow across our local mountains and then talking about the morning hours still seeing some activity by the afternoon hours. So with the Padres game first pitch yesterday, the model was showing we could see some showers around 110 throughout the game. There is a chance you could see some spotty showers. That will be the case. You're also seeing that around 305 and then everything clears out as we go into tomorrow night. So yes, we are talking about the potential of seeing some light shower activity during the game. But overall, nothing that seems to really cause any major problems. Just pack a poncho. We'll take a look at your complete forecast and more and that snow in our mountains coming up. Marcella. All right. Sounds like no postponement, which is great news. Thanks so much, Carleen. With rain also falling across the L.A. area, one neighbor up there is fearing another hillside collapse. People who live in Pacific Palisades are concerned after a landslide there earlier this week. Wow, just how close that landslide came to those houses right there. They are sure hoping the storm does not cause the land to slide even more. The landslide led to the evacuations of two homes, the one we just saw. Two others were yellow tagged, meaning people can go inside to get their belongings, but they cannot live there until the damage is fixed. Construction and lane closure signs have been a source of frustration for commuters on Pershing Drive through Balboa Park for more than a year now, and they've reached out to us for answers. CBS 8's Brian White is working for you to find out just how much longer this construction will last. People who live around here tell me they're frustrated by how long this construction's been going on here along Pershing Drive, and they just want to know when's it going to end. It's annoying. It's absolutely annoying. John Citroni lives in North Park, and he commutes to the airport every day for work. The construction on Pershing Drive is driving him crazy. This is ridiculous. Not to be able to come home the same way as I go down, have to detour out of the way to get to the same location, doesn't make any sense to me. So he drove me down Pershing, where only one southbound lane is open. There is no opportunity to come back the opposite direction. You can see right there it says lane closed. As you can see here, northbound lanes going up the hill on Pershing are completely closed. This is going towards North Park, and it's been blocked off like this for quite a while. And it's just been stagnant. This whole thing has been stagnant. The construction started more than a year ago in February. John and others I talked to feel like it's never going to end. Finish it, please. And the city council tells me they don't know anything about it. As it turns out, they're adding bike lanes here. The construction is one of Sandeg's regional bikeway projects, connecting North Park to downtown with this two-mile stretch of Pershing Drive. And cyclists I talked to are happy about it. Just having this, the physical separation from vehicles makes a huge difference. Uh, confidence, you see more families out. I look forward to seeing more bike lanes in San Diego. I reached out to Sandeg and they told me the heavy rain has caused significant delays, but they're still on track to finish construction early next year. I don't get it. I'm sorry, I just don't get it. For John, it looks like he'll be dealing with detour routes for another year. Very unfortunate for all of us in South Park and North Park because this is a main lane north and south to the city. While others see the benefits of all this construction. The way I see it is that the city's doing a great job investing in infrastructure that will pay dividends in the future. Working for you, Brian White, CBS 8. Thanks, Brian. And don't forget here at CBS 8, we're working for you. If there's something you would like us to look into, a problem we can help solve, please email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. The city of San Diego's ambulance provider, Falk, says it is taking steps to address concerns about long response times. This comes as many service providers work to overcome staffing shortages and high demand. CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe rode along with Falk Cruz to find out what it takes to get the job done and how they're working through the challenges. As a primary EMS provider for the city of San Diego, paramedics with Falk respond to a high volume of calls on a daily basis. I got to ride along to get a first-hand look at what it takes to save lives. It's hard to keep up with it sometimes. For paramedic supervisor Abid Nader, responding to calls is only part of the job. Tried mercy, uh, sharp. Nader and the rest of the men and women at Falk also provide life-saving treatment to San Diegans, tourists, and in some cases, migrants. Nader says it's a high-risk job that can be physically strenuous. Harder than it looks, right? I know. <laughs> now imagine a real person. And at times, involve life-or-death yeah. situations. 
While riding with Nader, I saw what it takes to respond. I went out with Cruz as he took one woman to the hospital after suffering a medical emergency and saw how they worked to clear this crash on the 163. Metro Medic 10 will be available to me non injury. Falk and other ambulance providers across the nation are facing an EMT and paramedic shortage. There are uh, issues with response times and it's it's been a challenge. Earlier this month, Falk's managing director told CBS 8 they've made progress in hiring, bringing on 38 new paramedics since November. It comes as the city wants to make changes to Falk's contract as a result of longer wait times. The average response to priority one calls takes just under nine minutes. Under the city's plan, Falk would be required to subcontract with another ambulance provider to increase unit hours for paramedics. The city's public safety committee is expected to hold a special meeting sometime next month to agree on the changes. I know Falk has been doing what they can to, to try to catch up and make sure that they serve the city of San Diego properly. Despite the efforts to cut back on wait times, one major challenge paramedics continue to face is the nearly 15% increase in call volume over the past year, which amounts to about 450 calls per day. It taxes the system. Falk is working to boost recruitment, offering a $50,000 sign-on bonus to paramedics that's paid over three years. The ambulance provider is also working with schools to have EMTs promoted to paramedics. To learn more about what it takes and how you can sign up, visit cbs8.com. For Cia de la Fe, CBS 8. Tonight, the Aztecs are in Houston ahead of Saturday's showdown with Florida. Uh, the team just arrived at their hotel about 30 minutes ago. We just got this video before they play Florida Atlantic. This morning, Aztecs fans gave the players a send off uh, to the airport. They were on campus together players unloading there in Houston. The Aztecs hope to continue their March Madness run with a win against the Florida Atlantic Owls. Don't forget the game starts at 3 p.m. Saturday and will be broadcast live right here on CBS 8. And CBS 8 is following the Aztecs as they try to dance their way to a national championship. Our John Howard and Jake Gariani will be heading to Houston for live coverage of this Final Four showdown. Again, that game starts at 3 p.m. right here on CBS 8. Still ahead tonight, we're less than 24 hours from opening day at Petco Park. First, we go underwater with some of the Padres. Why one dad is giving his son 40 acres of land for his 13th birthday and what they're planning to do with it.